Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video on East Coast Manga. So, today we're talking about a Inyo Sano work, A Girl on the Shore. Personally, I think my opinion is probably going to vary and differ from other people's opinions. Now, a lot of people really, like, highly praise Inyo Sano for his artwork and also his storytelling, how it can be very dark and dreary and even depressing at times. This is the same mangaka who has written and drawn Goodnight Poon Poon, also his newest work, Downfall, also Solonin, and a couple other manga. He also tends to take on some realistic type issues, and usually it's uh, personal and kind of mental battles, not so much physical battles. He doesn't focus on like fighting or anything like that. It's more stuff to do with relationships or just the human psyche in general. Now my channel, I believe I've already talked about Goodnight Pun Pun, and I haven't done like a review or anything on it, but, you know, in my opinion, that's definitely a darker story that at times can, can definitely require a break in reading, at least for me. Now this story, like I put in the title, it, it's not as much of a story for me as it is just like a hentai with a story. I don't, I don't believe this is really a true manga in the traditional sense, and some of you guys may really disagree, but... At the same time, I don't see a lot of people coming out and defending this manga. If anyone mentions this manga in their collection or uh, like manga hauls or pickups, they kind of skip over it real quick. And I think that's because a lot of people are afraid to talk about the subject that this manga uh, portrays and gets into. And to be honest, I'm going to say that I don't think I'm going to give any spoilers away because... Truthfully, I don't feel like there are spoilers to give away in this manga. I don't think the story is really that good. And I think that Inio Sano, when he was writing this, wasn't trying to portray a good story or a heavy story. I think he was trying to portray more of like a realistic type situation. But the reason I'm calling out this manga as hentai with a story is because there's so many pages of just explicit sex scenes that that it really overtakes the manga at least in my opinion I mean there's just it almost seems like filler on filler on filler of just those at least up until maybe the last 30 pages of the manga and I'm gonna be honest I feel like people usually won't talk about that or won't get into that for two reasons main reason is because of how young these characters are in the manga uh, they starts out at 13, and then they the manga ends at them being 15. Like, it doesn't even get into adulthood. Now, obviously, Japan is different in the way that they're able to do things. You see, um, I believe the age of consent is like 13 years old in Japan, which is kind of crazy. And this manga kind of portrays that. And here in the West, that's something that is kind of taboo. And I, that's why I kind of think it's funny that people don't, don't bash on this manga, but then will bash on other manga... And I think the reasoning is probably because, you know, number two is it's Inio Asano, and he is very well known and very well famous, at least here in the West, as like I was mentioning, a very good story storyteller and sometimes even better artist. I think his artwork in Goodnight Pun Pun is amazing. I think his artwork in here is also really good. And I also think that's why it saves this manga from essentially being buried and never coming out again. Now, to get into the little very now to get into the very little story there is, it's basically these two teenagers starting out as 13 and um, then becoming 15 and most of the story is them at 15. Basically the story is them forming a relationship while not forming an actual relationship. So they have a basically a friends with benefits relationship and there's some emotional attachment, but it's very little and very kind of messed up and complicated, which I think is a very realistic perspective, at least uh, within some people. And I think this story will hit home for a lot of people who haven't read it yet, but it really doesn't evolve any more than that. There's just a whole lot of issues revolving the relationship that happens throughout the story. And there's kind of a twist at the end. Obviously, I won't go into it and you can read it for yourself. But it's not, it's not like an impressive twist or something that, you know, no one saw coming. I mean, you could see it coming from a mile away. And I'm not trying to completely bash on this manga, but, but I'm trying to stray away from the fact that, yes, just because Inio Asano wrote and did the artwork for this manga doesn't mean it's a good manga. 
and the fact that it's, it's just, just completely filled with pages on, on pages on pages of these 13 year olds and then 15 year olds having sex is, to be honest, it's, it's pretty awkward and I think it will turn a lot of people away from this manga. And they don't, they don't try to hide it at all either. Like it's, they very clearly say that they're in like the seventh grade and then that they're in the ninth grade, although apparently ninth grade isn't quite high school at that time or it's the summer of them going into high school. I can't remember exactly. And unlike a lot of my other videos, this isn't a manga that I actually recommend you pick up. I think I think it's really not for everyone. And there's also some very, very off uh, fetishes, or, or at least one fetish, which, which I've also never heard anyone talk about. And I wish I did because it, it's not a main part to this story. But at some point, there is a fetish involving... Um, eating feces it's and honestly if if some of you guys may think oh like i just spoiled something well i wish someone told me that and like i said it's not a huge part of the story and it only it, it gets talked about and then at the beginning and then actions take place like at the very end or towards the very end personally like i've been saying i think the mangaka's name is what carries this manga and i think it was really him kind of letting loose some demons that he has and we see this through other uh, series and other manga sometimes where mangakas really kind of just release their inner uh, fetishes or you know anything like that I don't think this is a crazy manga that like you know really goes into that I just think that there's I just think that one fetish was was just completely unneeded for the story I don't think it had any place in the story and and I don't know I mean it's yeah, as many bad things I'm, I'm saying about this story, like, I do think the art's really good. I do think, you know, maybe it's not the worst story ever because at least there's a little bit of story. But, I mean, like I said, it's it's mostly just fillers filled with um, hentai-ish graphics. Now, once again, do I recommend you pick up this manga? No. If you have a huge Ennio Asano collection and you're trying to collect all of his works, obviously you're going to end up picking this up. But... I don't know. I think I think it's wrapped up for a reason. You know, literally like saran wrapped. Uh, when you buy it, or not saran, but you know, plastic wrapped. And usually, I feel like even manga that's saran wrapped, like manga, not hentai, but manga that's actually um, wrapped up like that. You know, you take a look at Prison School. Usually, it is not as graphic as this. And I really do think it only gets pushed into the manga category because it's Ennio Asano. So that's it for my review and impressions of the manga or recommendations for the manga. Personally, I'd love to hear your comments down in the comments section of what you guys thought if you bought it or kind of what your opinion on this whole situation is. I feel like not enough people talk about the negatives when it comes to this and people only want to focus on just nothing. Like, that. like I said, most people just skip over this if you watch videos where people pick up this manga or you watch collection videos where people have this. They... Basically, yeah, they, they just skip over it. They talk about how it's graphic, but um, but yeah, once again, I think Ennio Sano completely carries this manga, and uh, and yeah, that's my opinion, and uh, you know, it may not be correct for everyone, but it's my opinion, so catch you guys later.